So, on page um, on page fifty two, most of the chapters, if you've got the book, uh, it starts off with uh, like what you can hope to accomplish in the particular chapter, what to look forward to. There's a little recap at the end of the chapter, and oftentimes a little sort of activity. So, even though there's no official homework in this class. Uh, it is a good idea perhaps to go through uh, a chapter of the book and try to accomplish the task at the end of the chapter. Especially with JavaScript because as I said before, HTML, honestly, that's easy. CSS is a little tougher and JavaScript is hard. So that's why we're starting JavaScript uh, today and we'll mostly be focusing on it this week and next week then the class is over on the uh, 27th. Then the class the main class begins on October 2nd and that goes for a month part 1 then part 2 November and then part 3 uh, in December so there's this intro of one month and even if we were even if we had like a class of uh, you know meeting four days a week or five days a week these topics there's one thing to be said about memorizing a book that doesn't mean you're a, you're an expert programmer and taking a, an intensive one-month class, that still doesn't mean you're an expert programmer. It's all about applying the concepts that you learn to do something. So in this class, we'll, we won't be covering every nuance of everything, and we won't be covering every page, but I would recommend to get up to speed for next month, you, you do have the book or the websites that are on the syllabus, and you go through them as much as possible to have a foothold. On to chapter two. Um, we have these basic concepts, statements, and comments. Well, let's do this just to get used to it already. Uh, we want to work with uh, external CSS. We want to uh, link to uh, a. C we want to link to a JavaScript file. If I keep saying CSS, sorry, JavaScript. We're going to link to an external JavaScript file because, again, it's not good practice to have our JavaScript in the same file as the HTML. Embedded JavaScript is not the best. So it was fine for what we started here, but what we really want to do is external JavaScript. So after this block of script, in my case line 86, we're going to add another script tag. I'm going to keep this on the same line. We can say, since we're in HTML here, we can say above embedded JavaScript. Below external JavaScript. So above is the script block, the script tags, and in between is valid JavaScript. That's embedded. External JavaScript still requires the opening and closing tags, and we could have put it in separate lines, but I won't. We'll see why, because we then add an attribute to tell the HTML file where your JavaScript file is. The attribute is SRC. We saw SRC with image. The image tag had a source to say, here's the source of our image. Here's our picture. JavaScript, we need both the opening and closing tags, nothing in between. But then in the attribute of, here's where our JavaScript file is. We'll just call this um, my, my JavaScript. JS. So when this loads in the web browser, it's going to start on line one, process it all the way down to line whatever this is, get to this point of this first script, process all of those lines, then continue, then get to this and say, okay, let's pause here and let's go look at that file. Let's go process everything in that file. Once we're done with that file, we'll come back to the HTML and the HTML ends. 
So similar to the CSS. CSS, the difference there was that it was in the head. Remember, early on, in the head, it said, you know, process HTML, get to uh, the style, to the link to the style sheet, go process everything in the CSS, put it into memory, but then continue to process the HTML file and apply the colors and whatever. Here, best practice is at the end. So we can further write this. What yes? Do you mean by internal and external JavaScript? What do we mean by that? We've covered that before, which is that one file, uh, one is that it's in this file, and one is that it's outside of this file. So to further note here, um, we're going to say the um, uh, s external JavaScript uh, is linked to this HTML and uh, does not have anything between the script tags. So people might think, well, what if I, uh, what if I have this source, but then also in between the script I write some JavaScript? You should not do that. Uh, it should just be a script tag like that. Nothing in between the the actual tags here. No valid code here. Uh, the important part is to have the attribute source linking to the file where you've got the actual JavaScript code. the source attribute. At the moment, this file does not exist. Therefore, uh, nothing will be processed. One more note. Uh, best practice is to have the, the reference or the link to external JavaScript as the last thing before end of body. In contrast to having the reference to CSS as one of the first things in head. This is best practice. Um, you will see tutorials that put script as the first thing and it is better to put it at the end because again the idea that this is all processed in order CSS is first processed put into the memory and it knows wherever there's a P tag make it red text so it has that in memory the difference here by putting this at the end is it allows all the HTML and CSS to be created and then we can start to manipulate it with JavaScript. Early on, it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much, but it's going to be very important later on. Just best practice to remember. You're linked to your external JavaScript. Just make it be the last thing before the body ends, and you'll be fine. We need a new file in Notepad, so we'll create a new file. We'll save it as myjavascript.js as type JavaScript. Then there will be a line then there will be a link between uh, this HTML file and the JavaScript file. So let's create a brand new file and save it as myjavascript.js. So we can go up to the top, File New, File Save As, save it in the same folder as your HTML file. If it's in a different folder, in a subfolder, on the desktop versus your flash drive, this might not work right away. So confirm that you're about to save your file in the same place as your HTML file. And the file is myjavascript.js and type is JavaScript. Not Java. Java and JavaScript are very different. Even I was just gonna ask. 
Yeah, it's a big difference. It's basically the only thing that's the same is the word Java in the title. Okay. <laughs> Everything else is different. The commands are different. Okay. Syntax, the way it works. Isn't it like not object oriented? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Honestly, I don't know too much about Java. Um, I I think most languages, real languages nowadays, are object oriented. I don't doubt that maybe it's not. I just don't quite know. But uh, there is just way too many differences, and it's 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 different. So. Um, JavaScript.js. So I'm going to save that. Notepad then shows me one tab where my HTML file is and one tab where my JavaScript file is. And remember, there's that secret trick to view both at once. Anyone remember how to do that? You can right click the tab and then move to other view. If you want to see both files at once, you can right click one of them move to other view. I won't do that because my screen I'm always zoomed in and you won't be able to see both at once but maybe for you it'll help you to have two in, at once. Let's do document dot write now have external JavaScript. If you've noticed, technically there's a there's a capital S in JavaScript. It's okay if you haven't been writing it. It doesn't really matter. But technically JavaScript does have a capital S. This is just a a text. It's the the word appears JavaScript. Doesn't matter how you spell it here, but the word the name of JavaScript, you know, the trademark name or whatever, patented, whatever it is, has capital S. Okay, well just like CSS, if we try to run the JavaScript, it's only going to show you JavaScript, not your website. So I'm going to forget about this all the time. I'm going to try to run it, and it'll then only show me JavaScript. You have to run your HTML file. Well, what I see is the hello world. Then I see the pop-up. But I'm not seeing the last thing. I'm not seeing the, we now have external JavaScript, because, again, this is processing from top to bottom. The web browser got to the point of document.write, and it wrote it. Then it did console log. I haven't checked my console, but it should still be there. Then it got to window.prompt, which is the pop-up. And now it's paused there for me to respond. So it hasn't proceeded yet to line 92 in my case. After I type whatever here and press OK or cancel, then it can proceed. And then it gets to line 92. It jumps over to the JavaScript file. And then it writes the rest, which I expected it to be on its own line. But I never told it, so it didn't do it. And now it says the, the other part. This shows then again, yes, the sequence of this matters. So first it did hello world, then it did something in the console, then it made a pop-up waiting for us for user input. After I pressed OK or cancel, then it continued, and then it, go, then it checked the JS file. Well, this is going to be annoying us. We don't need that pop-up anymore. I don't want to delete the command, but I no longer want that command to be active. What should we do with line 23? Comment it, yes, comment it out. The fast way, double slash at the beginning, and you're done. You can wrap the you can wrap the slash asterisk around it, but you have to remember to close it. That took a little bit of extra time and effort, so it's so much faster just to remember double slash at the beginning of a line deactivates it. Instead of deleting it, because maybe I still want that command later, and I don't want to lose what I wrote, so commenting is the same as deactivating. Now when I run it, it doesn't have the pop-up anymore, good. And then it has the, we now have external JavaScript. So it should be loading from out there. If you're not seeing this, we want to stop here and make sure it works. Does everyone see the hello world and the we now have external? Anyone need any help? Go back to the JavaScript, mine's not working. It's still behind, messed up something. 
document dot write all in lowercase parentheses quotes semicolon. Or if the issue is not there, it may be the connection to the actual file down here. Script source attribute equals the name of your file, spelled exactly as you named it, and then the end of script. So here we've linked to an external JavaScript file. So the result is that. OK, well, this is a little bit more than I want to uh, get at the moment. But my idea was to have this line of text in its own, in its own line. And it put it on the same line as Hello World, even though clearly Hello World is on its own line right here. And then we now have external is on a completely different line. Well, document.write allows us to write text, but also HTML. So if we had written an HTML tag here, that would then write, that would then create the break and continue to write the message. So again, what this is about is that JavaScript is very powerful. It allows us to uh, to read existing HTML and CSS, and it allows us to change existing HTML or CSS, and it allows us to create new HTML or CSS. And so here, I wrote the HTML tag, and then it broke the line line. JavaScript is made of statements. One line at a time, write your command, end with semicolon. A statement. Line one is a JavaScript statement. Technically, that's the correct term, the correct vocabulary for this. Just like we have the vocabulary of a sentence, we have the verb, and I forgot the rest. So we have verbs, and what else do we have in a sentence? Nouns, and the preposition, and the punctuation. There's all that syntax, there's all that vocabulary that makes up a valid sentence in a language. Well, a statement is you know, one line that is a command of JavaScript that ends in a semicolon. And they end with a semicolon. JavaScript is a series of instructions that, this is, line, uh, this is page 56, a script is a series of instructions that a computer can follow one by one. Each individual instruction or step is known as a statement. Statements should end with a semicolon, except in special cases, which we'll talk about. Let's do something interesting here. We'll, we'll learn what all of these things mean in a moment, but let's write this. VAR space today equals new space date, capital D, parentheses, semicolon. There's a lot we haven't talked about yet. We haven't explained what var is, what equal is. We haven't explained any of this yet. That's OK. We're going to first write a little bit of code here, then we'll back up to explain what all of this is about. But 
even if I don't explain what all of these things are and you don't know anything about JavaScript, maybe like what is this trying to do? What do you think this is trying to do? Yes? Um, I think it means it is it's referring to the process of a process of new day as a variable today. Right? Process of a new day. New day. Yeah, yeah. You're you're on the right track. Yeah, yeah. It's about a it's about a day, a new date, today and such. Um, so if we don't quite know exactly what that means, a lot of what the code uh, could be is could be somewhat intuitive based on what uh, how it's named. Now we haven't talked about variables yet, but um, maybe you have a little bit of experience. But what would you say? What's a variable? If I never knew what a variable is, what are you talking about? Variable. What do you mean by variable? Mm -hmm. That's not the question. What do you mean by variable? Yes. Um, I forgot. I think that's, the that's okay. That's okay. We'll get to this. So, this you might have heard of the term variable. We'll talk about what variable is, and then the days of the week. Okay, that makes sense. That's a date and and that, and that sort of thing. But this is a JavaScript statement. It's trying to do something. The something I'll explain in a moment. Next line. V A R hour now equal to today dot get hours capital H parentheses again I'll explain all of this in a moment but if this is something about we're trying to we're trying to create like a new date January 1st 1998 I guess or well, it's based on today which is September 18th 2018 that kind of makes sense what about this statement what time is today what time is today or what time is right now yeah, yeah. Something like that. What's the uh, what's the time right now based on today? Yeah, so perhaps that makes a little bit of sense, even though it's in JavaScript ease. You know, I can kind of maybe understand what this is about. The nuances of what we'll get to. Here's a new one. V A R space greeting semicolon. Hmm. Now this looks a little different. There's no equal. What do you think this is trying to do? Yeah, maybe some sort of text, some feedback, some sort of message, perhaps. Okay, couple of enters. Next line here. I'm on line uh, nine. Let's say if parentheses, open close parentheses, space, curly brace, couple of enters, and curly brace. Okay, so this is something suddenly about if, with parentheses, our now, in parentheses, our now, space greater than symbol 18. So if we talk about 24 hour time, or military time, what time is 1800 hours? 6 p.m. versus 6 a.m. So. If, without thinking in the computer program, if it is currently past 6 p.m., how would you usually greet a person? Evening. Good evening. Great. So we'll say greeting equals quotes semicolon good evening. So here we're sort of trying to determine what day is it today. Check the date. That's today. What hour is it right now? Based on what day, what date it is today, what is the hour that the computer currently knows right now? Right now it's uh, 7.45 in military time. That's 1,945 hours, right? So 1,900 hours. If the hour right now is greater than, is more than 1,800 hours, it's, if it's past 6 p.m., the greeting, which we haven't determined yet, will be good evening. Well, through other parts of the day, we might say good morning or good afternoon. When does good afternoon usually happen? 
afternoon. Good, so after this curly brace, this statement is not done. I never put a semicolon. I'm not done yet. Else if, parentheses, curly braces, if the hour now is greater than 6 p.m., 1800 hours, our greeting will be good evening. Well, unless or, or else, if the hour now is after noon or 12, hour now greater than 12, our greeting will be set to good afternoon. So if it's after 12, it's the afternoon. Our greeting is set to good afternoon. Our message is set to good afternoon. What hours, perhaps, um, might we say good morning? Anything before noon? So we have another possibility. Or else, if, oops, I put a space here. It doesn't matter if you had a space so here, but. In the of your yes, let me answer that one moment. But uh, if you put a space here like me, it shouldn't be a problem, but let's not put a space there. If, no space, hour now. If, no spaces, parentheses, curly brace, and curly brace. But yes, it reads it in the sequence. It's going to check is the hour right now. The computer will check the internal time of the computer to determine what the date is. The computer is storing the date at all times automatically. That's built in. But we want to check, okay, check what, what, what today is. Check what the date is right now, this moment, line 5. Then determine what the hour is. Then we've got these what I'll explain later are known as conditional statements, then asking a question or checking, well, if the hour is past 6, then it must be the evening. Or else, if the hour is past 12, it's got to be the afternoon. Or else, if the hour now is greater than 0, remember, military time, when we get to 2300 hours, it's 11 p.m. 23.30 is 11.30 p.m. 23.59 is 11.59 p.m. There's no 2400. It goes back to zero. Zero is midnight. So technically, between midnight and noon would be good morning. Uh, I guess most of us would think between, you know, 8 a.m. and noon, when we really wake up, is morning. But technically, after midnight is morning. So zero hours is midnight. This is when our greeting <coughs> would be good morning. So there's three possibilities. There's three conditions. And I'll go back and write notes in this in a moment. But one final line after line 15, document dot write greeting. No quotes this time. I'll explain why in a moment. But when we did document write previously, we wrote quotes, hello world, whatever. Well, no quotes this time. Here's some JavaScript that does stuff. You want to save this and run your HTML. If you try to run your JavaScript like this, it'll just show you here's your JavaScript. You have to run the HTML. Save it, save both files. If you've got, remember, if there's a blue icon next to your file name, it has been saved. If there's a red icon next to your file name, it has not been saved. So if you remember to hit the Save All button right here, it'll save all your open files. You want to make sure both your files have been saved before you run, and you want to run the HTML file.
Hello world, we have now external JavaScript, no space, good evening. Because the time, the time of my computer currently is past 16 or 1800 hours. Did you, did you get that? Did you get an output that said good evening? I've cut everything that's on the screen. Yes, because like I said, you don't run the JavaScript, you run the HTML. You didn't get it over here? line is right there. Oh, no. Let me see that. Okay. Right, anyone else? Did you get your code? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
using parts of the yeah. I've looked at that yeah. in the office. Really? Yeah. I just don't like the asshole yeah. box. I know, I know, like, everyone loves it. I know that like, that's what I feel with it, but it's not even the asshole box. The guy who hit the box. Oh, Ron? several things happen here but let me mention something also uh, I'm sorry but you're gonna get jealous that my code always works perfectly and the way that you can uh, help uh, help yourself is uh, there is the f12 developers console if I uh, load up my code here and I get no result what you're going to see early on is that whenever you make a mistake in the JavaScript most of the other code will then break. 
So if you had 10 lines of JavaScript that worked, and then line 11 is wrong, it may then uh, break everything past that. So that's one of the things with JavaScript. When one line breaks, usually everything that follows also then breaks. So the hello world worked, in my case, with nothing else. Well, hello world was line 21. Um, and then it had go process the external JavaScript. And then it didn't even do the part about, we have external now. So this is, again, when something breaks in JavaScript, a lot of other things break. Well, um, I'm, I'm stuck. No, we have the console, which not only is a place for us to give ourselves fun messages, but the console is a place for it to give us feedback about what's wrong with your code. And remember, I would have you remember the shortcut of F12, which is the same as right-click, view, inspector. But F12, in my case, I'm looking at the console. Syntax error. It's big and red and scary. Unexpected token. I don't know what that means. String literal. I don't know what that means. But it says here, line 12. It's going to, depending on the browser, Firefox tells you what line number, colon, what column, which is 11 lines over. You can ignore that. Line 12 is the important thing. In my case, in my JavaScript file, line 12, go look at that. And even if I don't understand all of this, what this message is, it's giving me a hint to go check line 12. For a few of us, when I helped you, it didn't work. So as soon as we look into the console, it says, go look on line 17. Go look at line 2. Even though I don't get what this is trying to tell me, even if you click on learn more, that's still going to be way too advanced for us at the moment, because it's going to give us a huge essay about what syntax error is. That doesn't exactly tell you perhaps what your problem is right now. It's just telling you the theory of what syntax error is. But at least it's telling me, go look at line 12. In my case, I made a mistake on purpose. But if I go look at line 12, OK, I'm looking line 11, 12. It all looks good. I don't see any problem. Do you see a problem in line 12? I'm missing an equals. It didn't say you've got a problem in line 10, so that must have been correct. It's saying I've got a problem in line 12. It ignored the rest, because when it finds the first error, it ignores the rest. Line 12, I'm missing an equals. So it might not tell you, you are missing an equals. I wish it could, but they haven't really created any good error reporting system that will talk to you like a person. It's going to tell you things that are like so programmy and nerdy that you won't understand what it's saying, but at least it's telling you something's happening on a certain line. I made another mistake here on purpose. Watch this. I fixed line 11. I'm not getting a result. I F12, and now it's saying unexpected expression, got semicolon. What does that mean? I don't know, but line 5 seems to be the problem. Let me go look at line 5. Let's see, line 5. Oh, that looks fine. I wrote date and everything correct. I'm missing a parenthesis. Now, how would you know that? As a beginner, you don't. But as you are reading a book and learning the syntax and taking the class, it'll start to make sense, it'll start to stick, and you'll start to remember, when is it capital, when is it parenthesis? Some of this you just have to memorize it. And right now I have not explained what a var is, I have not explained what new is, I have not explained many of this if stuff, that's okay for the moment. I'm just showing you this is a complete JavaScript program. Question? Actually, uh, I, I did it out of order. Uh, I had the equal sign. I removed that one first. Okay. And I had the date correct. I, I should have gotten both of these incorrect. I'll put both of them incorrect to show you that it will find fi five first. It's just that for the purposes I had, see, it did find five number, number one. Question. Is it um, as a clue uh, to remember value, uh, parenthesis comes right after value? because of little curly braces are part of the uh, program itself? Is that correct? Nope. We don't have the experience right now to explain this right now. Um, so I can't give you that answer just yet about it. it has to be this, it has to be that. The answer is, if you're using a conditional statement, the syntax to create the conditional statement is the parentheses exist in a certain place and the curlies in another. That's too advanced for me to say right now. Because we haven't learned what this whole block of code is. 
So for the moment, this is the correct code. Why is it correct? That's what we're going to build toward as we go through the pages. But this is all an example on line 56. This is a complete JavaScript program. I also see yes. that on line 9, we have the closing. Right after hour now, it has that little closing, but we did not have the beginning. In this example, it's not a closing. It is working as a greater than. Mm -hmm. Checking is a greater than. There's greater than, less than, and such. So there's a lot here that hasn't been explained, but we'll go to it in a moment. But several things happened. We created variables. We had a conditional statement. We had output. So I'll explain what all of these mean, but in general, let's do this. Created JavaScript objects. Programmed a conditional statement. Output to the screen. In general, that's what these three little sections did. Explaining what var and equals and new and capitals and all of that we'll get to. Explaining what is this parentheses why here quotes, explaining that. We'll get to it. But in general, here's what we did. Again, object-oriented programming. We created an object representing today. It's based on the date. It has to be a capital D. It's built in. There are things that are going to be built in that the browser will know what they mean automatically. It doesn't know what today is. We invented it. But it's based on something that does exist called date. It doesn't know what hour now means. We invented it. But it's based on uh, get hours. What's the current hour built into the computer's memory at this second? It doesn't know what a greeting is. Computers are very rude. They don't know how to greet you. We invented an object that is going to uh, be a greeting. But we didn't know what the greeting was until we checked, is the time after 6 PM? Is the time after noon? Is the time after midnight? Then after we check that, if the hour is past 6, it's got to be the evening. Set that object to be evening. If it's after noon, um, set it as afternoon. And if it's after midnight, it's morning. And then finally, to the main document object, we will write a message. And the message is the greeting. A script will have to, a code, a script, a program will have to temporarily store the bits of information it needs to do its job. It can store this data in variables. That's what we did here. Var, variable. Um, so a variable is like a piece, like a scratch paper. Variables, var, are scrap pieces of paper to store something temporarily in memory to accomplish tasks. If I wanted to calculate the area inside of a box, that's width times height. So I might be able to do it in my head, but if I've got a piece of paper, I'm going to write, this is 7 inches by 2 inches. So on a scrap paper, I wrote down 7 times 2. This is a variable in the real world. 7 times 2, I'm going to write here, is 14. So I'm going to write it down to keep it in memory, because I'm going to forget. This piece of paper is a variable. It's storing a piece of information, which can vary, which can change. I'm going to do another calculation. I'm going to do 7 times 3 equals 21. I'm using the variable to do another calculation. Variables right here is a temporary storage, just like this paper is temporary storage, technically an object. So we've got the today object, the hour now object, the greeting object. A 
they can change. Hence, being called variables, they vary. I like to think of it also like containers. This container um, can store different things. This is a variable. This can store water, this can store coffee, this can store apple juice. It's a container that changes, it varies. Before you can use a variable, you need to announce that you want to use it. This involves creating the variable and giving it a name. Programmers say that you declare the variable. So technically what we've done here is we've declared three variables. Below, we declare three variables. And the way we're doing that is by saying the keyword of var. Var is built in. The web browser knows what you mean when you use var. Space, the name of your variable or object, case matters. Notice I've got a capital N there. It would have worked fine if it had lowercase our now, but I would have needed to write our now in lowercase everywhere else that I had it. This is going to cause a problem. If I declare this variable with lowercase now, and then I try to use it over here, it's going to give me an error, because our now is not the same as our now. Capitalization. I'll prove that to you by running it. Yes? So would you then uh, have to create our now saying something total? I mean, our now can still be a command as long as it's consistent, right? Uh, as long as it's consistent, yeah, that, that's what I said. So, I mean, but you could still have hour now and say they say hour now could mean three p.m. and then the hour now with uppercase can be four p.m. Yeah. As long, but it's confusing if you left it like that. I mean, but it could still be a command. It could still be used, spelled however you want, as long as you're consistent. Yeah. So here, when I ran that, it gave me that error. It said reference error. I don't know what that means. Our now is not defined. That kind of makes sense. Not defined, but it's telling me line 14. Now it's not telling me you mistyped our now on line 10. It will say I've declared our now. Fine, that's valid. Variables can be called anything you want. The error is happening on line 14 saying I don't know what our now is because our now is not the same as our now. So that's where the error is, not that you misspelled it here. Again, some of these, this is more, uh, at this point, this is a bit more of a, of a logic error rather than a syntax error. I spelled var properly. I put the equals properly. I put the dot and all of that properly. But the logic of it is that our now is not the same as our now. And by fixing that, then there's no more error. So we declared variables. Variable name is today. Var is an example of a built-in keyword. It's something that the browser knows. Var is a keyword. A built-in command. Today is not. We invented it. When is it built in? When is it? When do we invent it? That it's too early to tell you a hard rule about always this, always that. Um, but if I were calling this kitty var is kitty, and then today and then kitty dot get hours, that would continue to work because I've used it consistently. And you might think, well, as long as it's on the left side of equals, you'll be fine. Not always. Again, it's too early to tell you when is it always correct or incorrect. But in our case, today is not a keyword. We invented it. The book says this is sometimes called an identifier. The name of the variable is an identifier. The word var is a keyword which is built in. Actually, then also new 
is a built-in keyword, and date with a capital D is also a named known JavaScript command, a keyword. Once you have created a variable, you can tell it what information you would like to store for you to keep track of. Programmers say that you assign a value to the variable. So below, we declared three variables, and then we assigned values to two of them. The assignment is the equals. We created a new object called today, and we assigned it to check what today's date is. We created the variable hour now, and we assigned it, we put into it, remember it's like a container, we put into it what is the current hour, you know, um, 20, 100 hours and 17 minutes. But we didn't assign a value to greeting. That's valid too. We don't know what the greeting is yet. So when we create variables, we can assign them something early on or not until later. An example would be, you don't have to write this, but an example would be var high score. It's valid to then end it right there. There's going to be some high score. Or we could also assign it at that moment, 1 million. So this is the high score. You better reach a million. Why no commas? Don't worry about it. But here, in this comment, uh, using the var keyword to create a variable with a name of high score, and we're assigning it the value of 1 million. Or not, because it'll be determined later. So this equals sign in um, in most programming languages is not the same as equals in math. Equals symbol in JavaScript and most languages, most computer programming languages is not the same as math equals mathematics. One plus one equals two in math. Whereas uh, even the even the plus symbol is not the same in, in programming languages. Um, take values at left, add them, show it at right. It's basically in math what's happening there. To the left of the equals, take those two values, add them up, show the result on the right. That's in math in JavaScript where we had the example of uh, var um, cat name equals mittens that's basically saying take the thing at right of the equals and assign it or put it into to left object So very different here. This is then known as an assignment operator. Very fancy. But it's saying the operation, the command that we're doing is take what's ever on the right, put it into the thing on the left. On this example, we are not putting anything into it. There's no assignment operator until here. After we did a calculation of what time is it, then we have the assignment operator take this variable and then assign it a message. We're setting, we're taking the thing on the right, putting it into the thing on the left. And that's what usually happens on most programming languages. It's not the same as equals in math. jump down over here we programmed a conditional statement now 
it's just a little faster for me to do the double slash, but remember, you have to put a double slash at the beginning of each line that's a comment. We'll probably write a big comment, so it might actually be more efficient to start with the opening and closing multi-line comment, so I don't have to remember to type the double slash every time. Yes? Is there a reason why you prefer to always use an uppercase on the second name? Yeah, I mentioned that before also like in CSS, that it's simply more readable. When it's lowercase, the word seems like too jumbled together. I can't really read it. By having capital in between, it's a little bit more readable. But I have to remember to keep the capitalization always, or that'll cause an error. So conditional statement, how the program makes, quote, decisions. checks possibilities if our current hour is past 6 p.m. then we assign the text good evening into the variable greeting well the possibility could be that it's afternoon or after midnight, you get different results. So a conditional statement is a way to make decisions to check possibilities. We could have if high score is greater than 10,000, the message on screen will say you don't have the high score yet. If it's greater than 50,000, the message could say you're doing great, keep working, keep, keep playing. Or if the high score is greater than 1 million, the message will be, you got the high score, and another command, play a sound, and another command, play an animation. So you can have a variety of things happening between these curly braces right here. We had one thing happen, several things could happen in between. Notice we didn't, we did not have the var keyword at the beginning of, if I write line 26, 27, 28, that won't work because when I press enter the lines will move. But you see at the beginning of each little block, at the beginning of each statement. Notice we did not have var keyword. We only use var the first time when you're, defining. when you're defining, when you're declaring it, yes. We only use var the first time we declare a variable. If we did use var down here again, it could cause an error, either syntax or logic, because it would recreate the variable every time. Would it let you? Well, here's one of the things. As we worked with these things, we can try it out and see what happens. So I will put it in in all of them. Let's see what happens. It still gave me the same result. I check my errors. There's no errors. In this case, with this simple program, not a problem. But when we get to more complex problems that could, more, more complex programs that could cause a problem. So did it theoretically just keep replacing the value of readings to whatever the last one is as the morning? Before I added var, it, did, it already did that. Right. Before var, it was replacing what was already there, which in the beginning was nothing. Right. What technically is happening, we're recreating the object every time. Right. We're so putting it into memory again and again and again and being inefficient. So theoretically, at that, the last value of greeting would be good morning then, which is the last. No, because Nine remember, it, it doesn't go in sequence. It goes by checking what is the hour. Oh, OK. So it still has to go through the conditional statement. Yes. OK. Based on what time it is, it'll do one of these. If it's not this time, it skips it. It doesn't even process it. OK. OK. And so in our case, it 
it's not a big deal that we do have var, but we should not because the idea of adding var is let's create a let's create something. We don't need to create it three times. We've already created it one time on line 17. We don't need to create four versions of it in memory. We have the one we created on line 17. And then output to screen. Access. Uh, we'll do it the multi-line. Access the document object. the main part of the browser use the write method a series of built in steps that shows stuff with the greeting parameter So this is, all of this explanation is distilled down to here. Go to the main document, write on screen the greeting message. The greeting message was based on what the time was. We'll write one more note here, then we'll take a break. Uh, let's write it. Um, let's write it at the end. And here's a note, page 62. Data types. JavaScript can store or uh, deal with different types of data. Some include numbers, aka numeric. An example would be the number 1, or the number 99, or the number whatever number that is. So numeric data type. We can, st we can create variables, we can create objects that store numbers. The purpose of this container is to only store water. The purpose of this variable is to only store numbers. We can have a data type of strings, text. So this would be something like hello or error. Please try again. Notice quotation marks. These numbers don't have quotation marks. Upon our conditional statement, it said our now greater than 18. And 18 was not in quotes. It was a play, it was a number, numeric data type. Also, its color was a little different. In my case, it's gold. And then in quotes, it was a gray. If you're if you change your color scheme, it's going to be a different color, but uh, it differentiates it. So uh, variables could store numbers, they could store strings. 
which is text, one letter, one word, one paragraph, or, or more, but it's in quotes. We have another kind, and we'll look at some other ones, but we've also got Boolean, which is basically either or of true-false. It's either true, it's either false. Uh, it's a little more advanced than I want to get into in, in the moment, but um, you can store variables that deal with a true or a false. And if we know that, then we can use that with conditional statements to do things. If you have the high score, if high, true, if high score equals true, um, play a sound. If high score equals false, don't play a sound. We have other types as well. All right, uh, let's take a break at this point. It's 8.32. We'll take a break until 8.42. Uh, when we come back, we'll keep going through this chapter. These are This is chapter 2, basic JavaScript instruction. So we'll be back in 10 minutes.